supermarkets, you see it in the drugstores, you see it on TV, there's this new ad out about the importance of getting this flu vaccine. Now Chiron is one of the companies that's the big makers of flu vaccine. And you may remember that their, their plant was closed down because of contamination of the vaccine. And they allowed them to reopen the plant without even re-examining it. So this is the, the type of things that we're up against. And of course, the W here is in close ties with the Merck Pharmaceutical Company, and uh, he is their chief protector. Well, Merck is sort of the leader in this forced vaccination idea. Now, I recently learned at this meeting in Pittsburgh, one of the justifications they give for forced vaccination of people. And that is, they say, well, the inner city kids are not getting vaccinated. Their parents will not bring them in for vaccine. Therefore, we need a mandatory vaccine and a law that makes everyone get it so we can get the vaccine to the poor kids. That's their justification. Now, what happens with multiple vaccinations? This is the whole theory that I have of, of what causes these degenerative diseases and why vaccines are so dangerous. We know that when you stimulate the immune system uh, the first time, let's say the child's just born, it activates the brain's own special immune system called the microglia. We call that priming. And what that means is those cells are put into overdrive. They become activated. The next time you vaccinate that child, the child gets an infection, that activated microglia overreacts in a hyper-intense way. So it's pouring out inflammatory chemicals called cytokines, and it's pouring out excitotoxins in very high concentrations that saturate the brain cells and the brain connections. Each time you vaccinate or the child is infected, the reaction is more intense. And what the studies show is there's a three-fold higher secretion of these inflammatory chemicals in the brain each time you stimulate these primed microglia. And we know that a lot of things can activate these microglia in the brain. For instance, virus and microplasma, which I say where the contaminants can do it. Live viruses from the vaccines can do it. Uh, viral bacterial fragments can do it. Protein additives, polysaccharides, MSG, mercury, aluminum, all are known to be very powerful activators of these brain immune cells and can activate them for very long periods of time. Now this is a very uh, 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 conservative vaccine schedule. I used only the vaccines they say every child absolutely should have. This is the schedule that we give vaccines to children. Now, in pregnancy, the mother's to get a flu vaccine. Now, what that means is that pregnancy, that baby's uh, microglia in its brain are primed. They're turned on, okay? Then at birth, the child's supposed to get a hepatitis B vaccine. Well, now you've really activated that microglia because the hepatitis B is one of the most neurodestructive vaccines they've recreated. That and the tetanus vaccine. Hepatitis B is number one. Uh, people who get hepatitis B have a 300% increase in developing multiple sclerosis within three years of the vaccine. Then at two months, we give the child six vaccines. Now that's six doses of extremely powerful immune activating adjuvants. That's a huge dose of immune stimulation at two months. Then. Two months later, five vaccines. Then two months after that, seven. Then two months after that, six. So you're sequentially and repetitively giving powerful immune brain stimulation one after another. When you do that in an uh, experimental animal, any animal, uh, whether it be a rhesus monkey or rats or whatever, if you use this same schedule, what happens is the brain is progressively destroyed. The development of the brain is severely altered. Now that's proven beyond any shadow of the doubt. And yet that's exactly what we do to every child uh, in the United States. Now all of you have been sick with the flu or some viral infection and you know how you felt. 
became very irritable, you lose your appetite, you get real sleepy, or you have trouble sleeping at night, you're, you're irritable. Uh, uh, all of these different reactions we associate with getting a viral infection. Well, it used to be thought that that's just because you feel bad. Well, now we know, no, it's not. And what happens is when your body gets infected, it turns on these microglia in the brain and they start secreting inflammatory cytokines. These are chemicals that, that mediate the immunity. And that's what causes this brain reaction. So you have difficulty with your memory, uh, you get depressed, and they've noticed that the depression is just like major depression in people who have problems with depression. So it's when you secrete these cytokines in the brain in high level, produces this reaction. We call this sickness behavior. That's exactly what's happening in a child when you vaccinate. Most mothers know when you vaccinate a child, uh, the child can scream and cry for days or even months. Uh, won't eat, uh, cannot get the baby to sleep. That's because of this same sickness behavior reaction on the brain. The brain is inflamed because of the vaccination. And that brain can stay inflamed for years. Uh, and it's due to activation of these microglia. Now just to show you in another disease, this is uh, Alzheimer's disease. This is a normal person the same age. <clears throat> this is a special scan we call a, a uh, activated microglial scan. So in a living brain, you can see the activation of these immune cells. In normal age person, you don't see a lot of activation. But in Alzheimer's patients, you see tremendous activation of the microglia. And that goes on for years, all the way until they die. And these activated microglia are secreting these immune chemicals and secreting those excitotoxins, producing this immunocytotoxic damage to the brain. Well, this is what happens in the vaccinated child brain as well. And that's uh, this diagram, you don't have to really pay attention to the details, but when the microglia is activated, it secretes a lot of free radicals. It secretes these uh, lipid destruction products, lipid peroxidation products, and a group of excitotoxins uh, called glutamic acid, quinolinic acid, or spartic acid in the brain. These levels rise very high. Now, mercury also stimulates these same excitotoxins to be released. And that's one of the reasons you have their problem. Now these microglia are secreting these toxic chemicals all around the neuron and the neuron correction, uh, connections called the synapse. And a lot of things can activate these microglia like mercury, aluminum, fluoride, MSG, vaccinations, candida infections, gut infections, vaccine contaminants, food intolerance can all produce this same microglial activation. When you have a stroke, a lot of the damage is due to microglial activation. When you have a head injury, most of the damage is due to microglial activation. So it's a common mechanism in a lot of disorders of the brain. Uh, I'll skip that, that's a little complex. And in the brain development, we know that these brain cells have to migrate. They start out in the center and they migrate out into the brain. Well, the thing that makes these cells migrate is glutamate. And it's a timed concentration of those, uh, of those uh, uh, glutamate secretion that regulates how the brain forms. And so you have an a, a increase in glutamate and then it falls. It has to occur at a particular time uh, or else it, the brain is ever to develop. Now when you start vaccinating and you make the brain secrete high levels of glutamate throughout, the brain develops abnormally. And this has been done. This has been reproduced experimentally. And it produces gross brain abnormalities. And the brain is an extremely complex uh, organ, as you can imagine. Uh, so even subtle abnormalities in brain development can produce behavioral problems of all kinds, memory problems, behavioral problems, angry outbursts, uh, depression. All these things can occur later in the life of the child. Well, who's going to go back and say, well, it was due to the vaccine? Particularly if you don't understand neuroscience. 
So when the parents come in and say, well, my child has major depression now, or my child has uh, uh, ADD, ADHD, uh, the pediatrician's not gonna say, well, it's probably the vaccine, because they're not gonna think anything that far back could, could uh, affect the brain later on, but it does. One of the parts of the brain that's severely affected is the uh, cerebellum. We find that these immune reactions can destroy some of the most important cells in the cerebellum. The cerebellum controls your frontal lobes, that is how you think, your higher uh, brain function, and your ability to pay attention, uh, those sort of things. Now that, that sweet little picture is what they show people of how the vaccination process is such a fun family affair. Now the, the, the question that, that comes up, well, you know, it's a cost-benefit analysis here. Yeah, there's things can happen with vaccines, but <clears throat> if we don't vaccinate, millions of children would die. And I, I speak to, to my body.